Hello! So after some fills, it's time for a win. At least, so far. Not jumping the gun right now. But uh, it's a panel. Uh, you might be able to see it consists of three parts. Kind of mid-range. Well, not like 200 hertz something, but tweeter and uh, another mid-range in the Polito setting. Uh, and one of those Dayton woofers. It's not the woofer I want to use. So I'm still not sure if I can reach the SPL I need for these uh, SB acoustic woofers, which are like 88 or something. But it all depends. I mean, these are 80, these should be 86.6. .6. But when I uh, filter it, or like when I choose a crossover to get a rather smooth response, I lose like 5 dB. <laughs> so these are 3 dB down compared to the woofer, but these are not 86.6 .6 at the moment. So these are rather low. And I'm not sure what happens with the SB acoustics if I have to filter it as well to get a normal... Um, flat response instead of some rising response I get with these above 300 hertz or something which is not the baffle or maybe it's also the baffle but uh, yeah the baffle should be at around 500 or something well anyhow and the game would not be 60 B but uh, my DSP only has uh, two channels for uh, left and right so I had to make a filter so this is the crossover for uh, just this panel because, uh, well, my DSP has no more channels. Would be very interesting to buy maybe a 2 in 8 out in the future or something. Because this time it worked out rather okay-ish, but there's, you know, tweaking is qu quite, you know, cumbersome to solder stuff around. Yes, these are really cheap caps, I don't care. This is just crap I had laying around and it works. But usually I want to try this crap with a DSP, not with components like this. Uh, on the back side there is a piece of felt, but I can assure you they're uh, five centimeter long magnets here for the mid-range than three centimeters long ones for the treble panel and then again five centimeters for the mid-range stuff i had laying around uh, the tweeter would be nice if i had slightly stronger magnets so you could make it completely flat now that in this case that's not the case and usually actually it drops off where you usually want to have it drop off but if you want a flat response that's not possible because the tweeter cannot play louder than this while the mid-range has higher impedance and plays a little bit louder so yeah if if i could choose i wish i have some spare room but i haven't same story on 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 that speaker i thought i make two this time I first made one of course then I noticed it worked quite okay but to have a feeling about how it sounds you need to have two and so far I am <laughs> it sounds a bit like repeat although last video was about feels this one it has some I don't know sp spaciness or whatever it, it's probably because uh, it's more like a point source uh, thingy and, and it sounds rather pleasing to me. Yeah, so it's a Dapolito uh, setting, so uh, the horizontal um, dispersion is increased a little bit. Vertical uh, is crappier. Uh, but then again, the tweeter is kind of, you know, large for a tweeter. Uh, so it will never have great vertical dispersion then I have to use less coil but that results in even more 
or even less output, even more or less, <laughs> even less output. So uh, this is what I got right now. I might need stronger magnets for the tweeters. I need to maybe decrease the distance magnets to tweeter foil because it doesn't have, uh, it, you know, there's no excursion there. So I could mount the magnets closer. That would increase the output. And another thing is I used, this is on Captain, by the way. It's hardly visible, but it is aluminium on Captain. Um, here, I show you a membrane. That's one of those foils. It's a huge slap of Captain, but it's also, you know, it, it is weighty. It's quite heavy. So if I want to increase the tweeter output as well as the mid range, I need to have thinner Captain. This is Captain with glue on it, which is the reason why I used it right now. Not, not because it's Captain, because I don't like Captain all that much, but it had these uh, resin, whatever glue on it acrylic I think or silicone I don't know anyhow really sticky and uh, why this looks so hazy is because I used some um, powder to make it not stick anymore because otherwise you know I cannot work with it after I put on the aluminium of course uh, but now when I think of it I might be able to use the stickiness of this stuff to put it in a tension jig when I mount it. But that's for, you know, it's not crucial for now. Uh, I need this stuff, but lighter. And I know there is a version that is half the thickness. I once ordered a roll this wide and then decided, no, 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 wait, can I cancel it? Because it was like 100 euros. <laughs> 100 euros for 50 meters of insanely expensive captain tape and uh, I cancelled it and he said no problem so I was like phew thank god because you know sometimes I order stuff and then I'm like oh fuck I should shouldn't have ordered that I rather have food <laughs> for instance <laughs> but maybe in the future when I got some spare money I'll, I'll buy one of those rolls because this is rather heavy if I can find something that is Half the thickness or half the weight, that would be awesome. This is, uh, yeah, too heavy, but this is all I got. Um, I tried using the aluminium tape on mylar, but it's no way I can cut these, these coils uh, without it getting off the table or I cannot weed it, so get the stuff out that I don't need. It's just, I tried gazillion times, it doesn't work. This sticky stuff works really well, really great. Uh, I can use very um, heavy or strong glue on the cutting mat, which makes it possible for me to cut all kinds of stuff that you normally cannot cut. Uh, and then if you want to remove the whole film, you need something on the other side that sticks even harder than that. And that's why this Captain stuff worked out quite nice, because it sticks really well. Uh, yeah, and, and I made a few of those membranes. Well, three. Two for these and one spare. Let's listen to a tune. It's going to be Kokorosi, Kokorosi and Leaky Lee, I believe. Yeah. I, I played those before and I was listening to it and I was like holy shit this is so to me I'm not sure if it will translate to YouTube but so differently than the stuff I made before so uh, like really spacious and wicked I'll show uh, some measurements right now this is with woofer and Midridge and, and Twitter uh, quite quite doable I guess and the tweeter is even or the mid-range and tweeter are 3db down I cannot control them separately at this moment because I made a crossover for it 
if I had a DSP that had more channels, I could, you know, up the tweeter a little bit or whatever. Anyhow, let's spin a tune. It's gonna be Wicked Cockerosi. Shall I put the camera somewhere else for a change? There's the mic, by the way. Standing a little bit in front of the couch this time. Uh, because I noticed there you got a huge hump. And to my ears, the sound will move to the right speaker. I always have this, by the way, but people always say, no, I don't hear it. But I'm pretty sure it does. I think it has to do with that wall behind the speaker that like you know is different than this corner there and that makes it act differently at the listening position there so let's look at this very nice contraption uh, by the way these are meant to be sitting in a housing I already drew up very slim like this deep very tall they they will be sitting here and underneath the sv acoustics if i can match them and output because i'm still not sure if it's if it's possible i might need to decrease the x max of those panels because i will never reach them anyway uh that and maybe change the magnets up also have to lower the impedance of the mid-range which is uh, six ohm so two ohms too much also decrease the tweeter impedance that is 4.3 ohm and i rather have it at 3.7 ohms just to get a little bit more output etc etc much to try i probably need to make a housing for those sb acoustics and measure it and see what it actually does because i can guess all i want and i can look at those measurements from sb acoustics forever but it's not going to tell me how loud it is uh, especially if I looked up the measurements of these datins. They say 86.6, that's very much true, but not at 50 hertz. And if they play down to 50 hertz, it would be nice to start from there. But that's like 5 or 6 dB lower. Well, my... Okay, so this is done. I'll restart the camera because otherwise it will go out and check the battery.